tasty pastry. It's a low carb pop tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs. And we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. Welcome back to Legendary Foods Muscle in the Morning. I'm Dave Palumbo and today is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. And let's find out what's going on in the world of bodybuilding and fitness. Nine times out of 10 in life, when something seems like it's too good to be true, it probably is. But there's always that one exception. And based on what we've seen, Andrew Jack, during his first two outings on a pro stage, might actually be an exception to the rule. Heading into the Arnold UK, there was a sense from some people that his win at the IFBB Texas Pro was a one-off win, and that we were going to see him come back to earth in a deeper Arnold UK lineup, but as we all know, that didn't happen. In fact, the exact opposite happened. He didn't come back to earth, he shot up even higher into the stratosphere, and now he's one of the brightest new talents in bodybuilding. So, is this all too good to be true? In the long run, maybe it will be. But at least for now, it looks like Andrew Jack is A few days ago, I heard someone say that they thought we were going to have one of the deepest Olympia lineups beyond the top six that we've had in a long time. And at this point, there's no way to know whether or not that necessarily is the truth. But. If I happen to be the person who placed seventh in last year's contest and I heard that people are expecting a dogfight outside the top six, I would be doing everything in my power to make sure I can remove myself from that equation, just like Ian Valier is doing now. After he won the Vancouver Pro back in July, I know that there was some disappointment about his decision to pull back and not compete again until the Olympia. But to his credit, Ian was ahead of the curve on this one because he came right out and said that he didn't want to be seventh place forever, which meant that the best thing for him to do was to spend more time trying to get, well, better. Now, whether or not everything goes according to plan is anyone's guess, but the fact that he was willing to take action is all that matters, because leaving anything up to chance is one of the worst things that you can do. Speaking of not leaving things up to chance, what do you think the chances are of blessing Awadibu finding a way to crack the top 10 at the Olympia this year? If we were to ask the question at the start of the season, or even after his first win of the season, most people probably would have just dismissed it. But the fact for the matter is that in his two wins this year, he's beaten some quality competitors, including people who we've seen be top 10 at the Olympia in years past, which does add some more weight to those victories now in hindsight. Over the last year or so, Blessing has turned himself into someone who deserves legitimate consideration for the top 10, regardless of how deep we're anticipating the lineup to be. This guy has made a living by always finding a way to do the things that everyone else said that he shouldn't be able to do. So if you want to count him out now, go for it. But you should also prepare yourself for the ego blow that's coming when he does wind up doing what he does best, making sure he proves you guys dead wrong. If you're someone who's focused on continuous self-improvement, one of the keys to life is learning to identify where your comfort zone is and having the discipline to consistently push yourself beyond it so you can keep reaching new heights. But here's where the catch comes. Because the more successful you become, the harder it is to, well, Find your comfort zone, especially when you're a three-time defending Classic Physique Olympia champ who only has a chance to measure yourself against the competition once every calendar year. To a certain extent, bodybuilding is a you versus you thing because your prime objective is to wake up every day and beat the man in the mirror. And as long as you're doing that, you're probably on the right track. But on the flip side, when you're at the top of the mountain, everyone else is waking up in the morning trying to beat two people, you and the man in the mirror, which puts you at a disadvantage because you don't necessarily have the comeback, which puts you at a disadvantage because you don't necessarily have the same benchmark to reach for. So 
Are discipline and consistency enough to keep pushing you outside of your comfort zone? Yeah, probably most of the time. But is being slightly outside of your comfort zone good enough to stay at the top? I guess that's one of those questions that we're gonna know the answer to in time. And that does it for yet another edition of Muscle in the Morning. I'm Dave Palumbo reminding you to always be true to your passions and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.